What's up YouTube, Jeff back again today another exciting tech video for you guys. And today I'm gonna to be talking about 10 privacy features that you really need to enable in iOS 26 to make sure that you're taking full control of your privacy while using the operating system. Now, Apple is known for their privacy. And in fact, that's one of the reasons that a lot of people like to use them. Although I would argue that Android is also quite secure and has a lot of privacy options now as well. Google and Samsung have both done a lot over the last five years but iOS still has some of the best privacy features out there, and these can really help you if you're using iOS and iPhone as your main smartphone device. Before we get started though, one easy way to make sure that your information is private is to have your battery be completely dead, which with the new iPhone Air is not too hard because the battery is quite small and it does struggle sometimes to make it through the day which is why you might want to pick up a few of these brand new products from the sponsor of today's video, which is Basis. No matter which iPhone you have, whether it be the iPhone Air or the iPhone 17 Pro Max, you're going to need some great charging accessories. And Basis sent me out some of the items from their brand new Pico Go lineup. Here we have two awesome chargers. We have a 45 watt charger here, which has dual USB-C ports. This one here is the AN13 Pico Go. And here we have the 67 watt, which has three USB ports, two USB C's, one USB A here. This is a 67 watt charger. Now, both of these feature a chip for ultra cool charging, which means you're not going to have any problems with overheating. You've got the foldable plug on both of these. And just look how, look how small these guys are compared to some of my other chargers. Look at this one here. This is another example of a 65 watt charger. The 67 watt from Basis is much, much smaller here. And then I have another one from Belkin. Look how long this one is. They're just doing a great job. Even if you extend the prongs there, it's actually smaller in terms of the overall length. So this is gonna be great to fit in your bag for travel. It's absolutely fantastic the way that Basis has designed these. Now, the other thing that I love about these chargers is they also look nice. I mean, just look at the overall design. I love the color, the blue color, the Basis branding. And you also got this nice little indentation here where you can easily pull it out of the wall. Just some very small and thoughtful details. I'll have the prices on the screen there for both of these chargers so you guys can pick them up if you're interested. The other product that Basis sent out to me is the PicoGo AM31 Magnetic Power Bank. Now, this little guy is very, very small, but packs quite a punch. It's 5,000 milliamp hours with Qi2 charging built in. That means you can go ahead and snap it right here on the back of your iPhone 17 Pro Max and it's not going anywhere. You can also snap it right on the back of your iPhone Air, which like I said, you might need some extra charging. And this thing sticks really well. You're not going anywhere on the iPhone Air either. Now, the other great thing is no matter which phone you're rocking, you do have this kickstand on the back. So as soon as you want to put this in landscape mode to watch some movies or whatever, you can easily flip this into becoming a kickstand in addition to being your charger. It's absolutely awesome. I love the way that these accessories look, feel, and also function from basis. I really appreciate them sending these out and also for sponsoring this video. All right, so let's go ahead and get right into those 10 privacy settings you should change on your iOS 26 iPhone. First, let's go into the main settings menu. We're gonna scroll down here. We're obviously gonna spend a lot of time in the privacy and security menu, which is right here. And you're going to go here into location services. Now, you're gonna find a particular application. And when you find that particular application, like for instance, Crumble, what you're gonna to wanna to do is make sure that this location access here is choose to never or ask next time or when I share. You usually don't want to have this on always or while using the app unless you really do need it. And also there you can make sure that you look for the precise location toggle, which is actually my second tip, and make sure that you turn the precise location toggle off unless you really need it for this particular app. Now, obviously when it comes to crumble, maybe I would wanna turn that on if I were there and I was picking up an order so they would know when I'm parking, but then I could turn that right back off as soon as I leave. And then of course, there's a lot of other applications that turn this on by default and they definitely don't need to have that information. So you wanna make sure you turn that off. So two quick things, allow location access and precise location. You can find both of those within the same menu under each individual app. Now the downside to this is you have to go into the particular app and change it, which means if you have a ton of apps installed like I do, you're gonna to need to go in here and tweak this setting for each individual application. 
and make sure that it has been tuned to your preferences. There are some app developers though who are good guys who don't turn this on by default. For instance, Nordstrom has this off by default, which is always really good to see. Now, the next thing, if we back out of here, we're still in the location services menu, but in this case, we're going to go to the system services. And so to go into system services, we're gonna scroll down here and find system services at the bottom. Tap in system services, and what you're gonna do is disable any unnecessary options. Now you can see, out of the box, I haven't turned any of these off yet, Apple system services enables quite a lot of these right out of the box, so you wanna be kinda of careful. Now some of these are very useful, but if you don't use them, then you might as well turn them off so you're not sharing these permissions for no reason. For instance, if you don't use shortcut automations, you may wanna turn the top one off. Apple Pay Merchant Identification, maybe you care about that, maybe you don't. Cell Network Search, probably most people care about this. Compass Calibration, you probably do. Device Management, Find My iPhone. If you don't use a lot of smartphone accessories, you could turn this off. Uh, In-app web browsing, if you don't care about that, if you just wanna use your regular web browser, you could turn that off. Um, networking and wireless, you should keep on, obviously. Share my location, maybe you don't want that. That's one you could definitely turn off as well. Significant locations and routes. So what this will do is this will be, if you have, you know, obviously, if you have your home and stuff saved in here, you will see these things here, and then this is used to store that information. So you can keep that information there if you want, or you could also turn that off if you don't want it to store your home, your work, etc. Then down here, iPhone analytics, you could definitely turn this off if you don't want Apple to be using this for analytics accuracy. This improves location accuracy, but it's also just optional being shared with Apple. The same thing with routing and tracking and improved maps. All that stuff is sharing with them to improve their products. So you could turn off these things as per your preference. Up next, if we go back to the main privacy and security menu on the main level, right below location services, you'll see tracking. Now inside tracking, you can turn off allow apps to request to track. And what this will do is then none of these social apps, let me show you really quick down here, like Facebook, Pocket Cast, Spotify, X, and YouTube that have asked me to track, I have actually allowed them to track this because again, I create social content for a living and so I, I have some good reasons to want to do this, but you may not want to do this or need to do it for your work, obviously. If you turn this off, then this will allow you to stop any apps you're asking. Now, if it says, do you want to ask apps you previously allowed to track to stop? So actually, if you do turn this off, even if you've allowed some apps like Facebook to track you or YouTube like I have, you can actually ask those apps to stop tracking and Apple will force them to do so. So this is one of the best features that not every phone out there has. Apple really in, you know, instituted this. It made a lot of companies like Facebook, other social brands a little upset. Um, but I think users have come away, you know, around to the fact that sometimes you do want personalized ads, and so this will allow you to get that at the end of the day. Up next, we're gonna go back into the privacy and security menu, and this time we're gonna go to the fourth option, which is contacts. Now, if you go into contacts, one thing that you'll be able to do is go to change to select contacts or never for each app. So what you can do in here is see which applications have access to your contacts. You can see how many you have at the top. And then you can determine what access they'll have. So like Google Calendar, it kind of makes sense for me to have access to my contacts on Google Calendar because I schedule a lot of meetings. But if you don't need this, you can turn it off. And in addition, you can actually choose your contacts on a per contact basis, how many that they can actually use. It doesn't have to be all of them it can just be certain contacts. So if you only have contacts for work that you would be scheduling meetings with, you could restrict this to those contacts and then it wouldn't have access to your personal contacts as well. Going back here to privacy and security, this time we're gonna go down to photos, which is down a little bit here. And if you go to photos, you can tap on this and then you can also choose which applications have access to your photos. Now again, this really comes down to what the app is doing, whether or not it needs this permission, you can decide on a case-by-case -case basis. Now, Beeper is my primary messaging app that lets me sync all my conversations across various apps and iOS and Android, Mac OS and Windows, and so it needs access to my photos to be able to share those in those various conversations, so I don't mind. Um, Gmail, you can here, of course, share photos via email, but if you go into the application, you can actually see this app can show your photo library, but can only access the items you select. So some applications like Gmail, you can enable this private access, 
And then this will allow you in this instant to only allow it to view the photos and only see the ones you select in the app. In addition, if you go here, you can choose to include your location or not and captions for that photo. You may want to turn off your location for additional privacy. Now you can see Google Photos, obviously I use that to sync my photos across Android. Slack I use for work, so I often need to share screenshots. And X, of course, which is for social media. Again, none, limited access, full access. And then there's some options for like Gmail and other Google Suite apps where you can have this private access on, but you may want again go in there and remove location from those photos on apps like Gmail. Back here at the main privacy menu, if we now go into analytics and improvements, if we scroll down here, you'll find analytics and improvements right there. And inside analytics and improvement, you would like to go here to turn off all sharing toggles. So of course, it's up to you if you really want to share these with Apple, with other developers, but usually with app developers, I'd turn this off. Share iPhone analytics with Apple, that depends on how much you trust Apple, I guess. But if you turn that off, it'll certainly give you more privacy. Improve Fitness Plus by sharing your fitness data, improve safety, improve Siri dictation. There's all these ones you could turn off, but it really comes down to which ones you feel comfortable sharing and who you feel comfortable sharing with. I typically make sure I turn off the with app developers because I never know exactly who's developing the apps. I always try to install apps from developers I trust, but you never know for sure. So you can decide if Apple is also someone that you trust enough to share various pieces of these data but definitely make sure you take a look at all of these. Right below that option on the main privacy and security menu, we have Apple Advertising. If you tap on the Apple Advertising section, you can turn off personalized ads, and that will limit of Apple's ability to deliver relevant ads, but reduce the number of ads you receive. So if you want to get less ads, you can turn this off. However, keep in mind that as I said earlier, a lot of users have realized if you turn it off, you still get ads, maybe a couple less, but they will not be as targeted, which means you will not get ads that are relevant to you personally. So you may get ads about random stuff you don't care about, which can sometimes be even more annoying. So if you want maximum privacy, obviously turn it off. But in the case of Apple, I don't mind having this on because I feel like the ads are tuned and I do believe that Apple still does a good job of reducing ads when they can and they're better tuned to my own personal preferences. Business, education, entertainment, games, lifestyle, news, photo, video, productivity, and social networking. Those are mine. So you'll be able to see what your advertising profile looks like from inside this menu. Going back again to the main privacy and security menu, you'll be able to take a look at the app privacy report. This is actually off by default, which is a very weird decision by Apple. If you turn this on, it basically allows you to get data and sensor access reports from all the different applications you have, and you can review these weekly or bi-weekly or monthly to decide if a particular app is using too much information and you want to turn that off. I highly recommend doing that because of course it does give you insights into what exactly those applications are using. Next, we're gonna go into the wired accessory setting down here at the bottom with security. You'll see here, you wanna go for ask for new accessories. And if you go to ask for new accessories, you can also go in and once you turn this on, it'll make sure that for each new accessory, it asks whether or not it's going to be able to connect. This prevents other people from automatically connecting to your device. And if you go back into your settings, another thing you can do, the main settings menu, go to Face ID, my passcode here, and I'll show you right here, you can go to stolen device protection, and you'll wanna make sure that under stolen device protection, that this is also toggled to on. So even if you know someone's able to get your device, now you have a way um, to in fact retrieve that device and have protection for it remotely. So a couple of key things there that can help you with not only privacy, but also security. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, these 10 tips for uh, privacy that you should change on iOS 26. Some of these things are kind of buried in that privacy and security menu. So even if you did scroll through it, you might not have seen these exact things that we went through today, or maybe you saw them, but you just didn't understand fully what any of them do. There's a lot of stuff there that you can see. Anyway, if you want more great smartphone tips, not only for Apple, but also for Android and other great tech devices, definitely subscribe to the channel. As I said earlier, if you need some great charging products for your iPhone, check out our friends and partners over at Basis. These two chargers are very portable, the 45 watt and 67 watt Pico Go. And then also, Maybe my favorite product, this guy right here is a magnetic portable charger you can put on the back of your phone with MagSafe and it converts into a kickstand. 
you know, if you want to use it as a charger and a kickstand. Dual purpose right there, which I love. I have all the pricing there on the screen for these products, as well as a link in the pinned comment description for each one to purchase. I appreciate them for sponsoring the video. appreciate you guys for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks so much.